Welcome back to the Stratford Sessions, the Man United podcast we bring you each and every week on the upper tier. Head over to YouTube, smash that subscribe and bell notification button. This is your Atletico Madrid versus Man United preview. Joining me on the previews as always, the Dazzler himself, Darren, how are we? I'm all good, Noel. How are you, pal? Good, not a bother at all. Um, this is coming at you Wednesday night, 8pm from the Wanda Metropolitano. Um, what a great name for a stadium, isn't I'm gonna it? Say, you wouldn't want to say that after a few gargles, would you? I'm a water I tell you, I struggle with them at the best of time. Gargle or no gargle. Oh, um, I know that. <laughs> but um, contrasting styles here in terms of personalities with Simeone being the absolute lunatic versus Rangnick, who is kind of like more reserved and laid back and cutting with a stare, maybe, as opposed to his animation, if you like. Yeah, it really is. You know, it's it's polar opposites, but I don't think this is that bad a matchup for us, if I'm honest. Um, we obviously know we covered the draw live and uh, we went through the redraw phase and and this was this was the draw I wanted initially because, as I mentioned, my son has always had a bit of an affiliation with uh, Atletico Madrid. When we went on holidays as a kid. He didn't want a Barca jersey. And he didn't want a Real jersey. He wanted an Atletico jersey. And uh, we we got we got our wish, so we we're going over to the second leg, um, on March fifteenth, in Old Trafford, um, which is the Tuesday night. Should be should be you know this is the big games in European football, just even the toss of the Champions League, you know, getting that music back and getting that little tingle down the back of your neck when the kids are in the middle of the pitch shaking that football. It's just yeah, it's a what a competition, game. isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Not an um. Nothing compares really to the the, the team the team tune. Sure, it doesn't. It's just it no. gets you going, doesn't it? Puts that shivers down. It's, it's, a ma- it's the tune just fits it perfectly, doesn't it? I have to ask you, parenting one on one, did the kid get a ticket in the away end or is he in with you? Oh, he's in with me. You didn't put him in the away end with his own type. <laughs> no, no, he's uh no, we we've, we've got our season tickets, so he's we're sitting in our own seats that night, you know, second row behind the goal to stretch for the end. He's certainly interesting. Excellent. Um, I, I presume he's more United than he is Atletico, even though he supports Absolutely him. Absolutely, he is, yeah. No, I'm, not, well, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying visions of you sitting there in a Ronaldo jersey and him beside you in a Suarez one or something, no? No, <laughs> definitely not. Um, no, it was, you know, when, you know, when you're a kid and you kind of, you have a team in every league in Europe, don't you, Neely? Yeah, that you kind of, you know, that you'd look at and you go, when I was a kid, like I used to, I used to think Barcelona were the business. You know, it because they were, because they were <laughs> absolutely, yeah, they were. But you know, obviously, I was a United fan, but Barcelona were like, Oh, yeah, have a look how they did the weekend, and and kind of you look at some of their players and stuff like that. And, and I think there's lots of kids that are like that, you know, with, with FIFA and with all the way the technology and social media and all is gone, mm. they have an attachment to, to clubs that maybe you know they're miles and hundreds of thousands of miles away from at times, you know, yeah. And um, but it's great for them to get into anything, you know, anything that keeps them out of trouble and off the street, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I suppose a refresher from the tournament. Obviously, um, United went through as group winners, um, but um, Atletico Madrid went through in second place. Uh, that uh, was a stretch of being the group winners, wasn't it? It was, but look, it is what it is, and you still have to do it. Um, yes. But you got there in the end. But it, it's, it's in terms of contrasting, this is two teams that are kind of having a similar type of season, aren't they? They're kind of stuttering through the season a little bit. Floundering, I would say. Yeah, I would have said they started the season with huge expectation mm-hmm. and are Absolutely. sort of stuttering and floundering, as you said, through the season. Yeah. Um, obviously, results at the weekend, United coming through, a great result against Leeds 4-2 in a proper battle, both in terms of the game and in terms of the conditions. And Atletico winning 3-0 over Osasuna with goals from Felix, Luis Suarez and Angel Correa. Um, yeah. What what you're thinking going into? I mean, obviously, Bowdy has shown a little bit of form heading into the game. Yeah, the, in the immediate game, you know, the, the game immediately before. I mean, last weekend, Atletico were beaten, if I'm right. You know, so I think their their form has been very very patchy. Um, I think they've struggled for goals this season, as they have tend to do do under Simeone at times. They've struggled for goals, even though there's a lot of attacking talent. He's very pragmatic in how he sets up the side and he and he expects an awful lot behind the ball, which maybe then 
pulls the reins a little bit on on the attacking flair. Like at this stage, I would have expected to see an awful lot more of the boy Joe Felix um, in, in an Atletico jersey because I mean they spent big big money on this kid. Massive money. They really did massive money, you know. Um, and and he hasn't really hasn't really you know set the world alight. Yeah, he scored the weekend and he showed, you know, there was an assist the weekend as well and he showed touches and stuff like that. But I don't think he, I don't think he's somebody we should necessarily fear, you know. Um, I think for United, and again, I don't like saying this, but I think the big threat for United is Luis Suarez still. Um, yeah, I think, the, I think the problem up front for Atletico, a lot of it is that the talent that they have up front is without question but it's strangled by the tactics all the time. I think if you put Joe Felix or Luis Suarez or the other boy in there, or Griezmann even, and you put them into, you know, a city side or something like that, I think they would be unbelievable. But I think because, as you said, the pragmatic way of how he sets up, it strangles any sort of creativity really, doesn't it? Absolutely. And I mean, even from the midfield, like he has what you would describe as three ball winners three engines in there there isn't necessarily a creative player he looks for the creativity to come from the void to and it's an awful lot then to leave it on like if I'm the, if I'm playing on the left of the front three most of the time the only options I have are the central striker and, and the player from the right whereas if you are playing against another team they might have two of those central midfielders getting involved that tends not to happen at Atletico because he doesn't like to leave himself you know, that exposed at the back and stuff like that, you know. Yeah. Um so yeah, listen, they, they they've got they've got some good players across the team in good positions and stuff like that. You know, even from the back, scoring goals is gonna to be tough. Like the boy Jan Oblak's a serious goalkeeper. Mm. Really, really is. I'm a massive fan of his, have been for quite some time. And um, when it looked like David De Gea was leaving Man United, he was my choice to come in. Um but I think, you know, I think this matchup suits us. I think this is a game that that we could bring that kind of high energy to, you know, the type of energy we, we had on Sunday for, what, 75 minutes of the game? Yeah. Um, and, and I think, I think that, would, that would do an awful lot for us if we could bring that kind of a, you know, that kind of a press and that kind of a... Um, you know, nick the ball nice and hit, nice and high and early up the pitch and stuff like that. And um, I think that would be really, really the way to go for us now. I have to say. Yeah, I was looking at um, I was looking at the stats there as well. You've only faced each other on one previous occasion in the ninety one ninety two Cup Winners Cup. Yeah. And um, where Atletico running out four one winners on aggregate. I can't believe you've only faced each other once before. It's mad to think that, isn't it? Yeah, and, and I suppose we looked. I looked at it earlier, and David A came to United in 2011, and this is his first opportunity to play against his old team. Uh, again, you know, it's 12, It's almost. It's 11 years. It's it's a long time of football. It's mad, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. When you think of the standard that Atletico have been playing at for so many years, really as well, like it's because we. I, I suppose in recent years, Atletico have been playing at a much higher standard than United because mm. they have been in the upper echelons of European football mm. and they have been playing in quarterfinals, semi-finals and finals when United haven't. Yeah, because for us, especially for Liverpool, we can't seem to shake them off at all. We need to get them every season. It's Absolutely. Mad, isn't it? yeah. um, looking at current form at the moment, Atletico uh, with a draw, two wins and three losses. So as you said, very indifferent in the Champions League yeah. um, and brought it down to the last day really to qualify out of the group in fairness. Yeah. Um, in all competitions at the moment, it's three wins and three losses. So again, hit and miss every second Result, you know, for United at the moment, three wins, two draws, and a loss in the Champions League form. Um, again, made much harder work of the group stage than what they should have, in fairness. Um, and in all competitions, three wins, two draws, and a loss. So they've kind of steadied the ship a little bit from where they were with the two draws and the two wins. Two wins obviously being pivotal and giving them the confidence, especially Brighton and Leeds. They are two big wins. Um, Absolutely. Six, there were six big points for us in space, you know, sort of five and six days. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, really important for us to get those points on the board and stay in touch in the league. Yeah. Um, in terms of team news, if you look at Atletico at the moment, uh, Yannick Carrasco was out and Felipe, they're out through suspension. 
Uh, Daniel Vass, I think I'm saying his name right. Is it Vass or Vass? Vass, I presume, is it? Vass. Yeah, yeah, Vass. And uh, uh, Matthias Kuna are both out through knee injuries. Thomas Lamar has a suspected COVID positive case, um, but I presume they'll look into that and see if that's a, a false reading or something like that. But the news, the big news coming out really is Griezmann is back fit and available for selection, which would be a huge boost for Atletico. So I'm sure they've been missing the quality of that guy. Um, for United at the moment, um, Greenwood is obviously out due to club suspension. Cavani remains a doubt to a groin problem. Eric Boye could recover from an ankle issue. Um, but the question is, who do United go with looking at the Leeds game? Um, Alanga came on, was brilliant. Fred came on, was brilliant. Lindelof, in the game, the way he played the game, moving forward on his distribution was really, really good. Um, a lot of energy there that came on and stuff like that. Is that the kind of idea that you would be looking at? Or yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um so so if I if I put my team out based on what we've seen at the weekend, um I thought, you know, when we did the match reactions, uh my two best players were Lindelof and Sancho. So they've got to start. Um I, I would put Varane in ahead of Maguire. Um, I think leaving the two lads on the bench, Dalo and Tale- Telez, would tell me they're going to play. Um, so you're probably looking at Dalo, maybe Lindelof, Ferran and Telez. Um, and then in the middle of the park, you're going to play McTominay, probably Bruno and Fred. And you may go then with um, Ronaldo, Sancho. And I don't necessarily feel like he wants to play Pogba higher up the pitch so I think he'd push that spot to Elanga and mm. I think we'll probably see Pogba come off the bench as the game starts to slow down where he can almost start picking pockets we've seen on a number of occasions when when left on the bench and came onto a game he was able to come on and really store the pot because he's coming on fresh and at time Lack of straight United fans, but I think him coming off the bench with sort of 30 minutes to go and adding a little bit of quality and freshness could be huge for us. Much, you know? much bigger impact, yeah. Um, much bigger. I'll go down through the, the potential starting lineups. Um, excuse me if I butcher some of these names on the Atletico Madrid. You can correct me on the way if you want. But obviously, yeah. all black and goals, outstanding yeah. goalkeeper, probably top four or five goalkeeper in the world. Um, Versalico, is that right? Versalco, yeah. Versalco, yeah. Jimenez, Savage, Renal, Renildo, Lorente. Ren, Ren and Lodi. Ren and, Ren and Lodi, is it? Okay. Ren and Lodi, yeah. Lorente, Koke, Condogbia, Correa. Jeffrey, Jeffrey Condogbia. Pretty yeah, good player. Condogbia, Correa, Felix, and Luis Suarez for yeah. Atletico Madrid. So plenty of attacking options there. And obviously, if Griezmann is on the bench to be introduced as well, Attacking options there, but as we said earlier, well, the pragmatic. You see, I, I would say the, I would say the, I would say the opposite. You know, I would look at that Atletico side and I would think, where are they going to get goals from? You know, obviously, Suarez, and uh, and you know, Joe Felix and Correa. But I mean, from the midfield point of view, Jeffrey Condogby is a he's a box to box player, but he's not necessarily creative. He's very defensive minded. You know. Um, everything will be square passes backwards square backwards there'll be very few go forward something similar to what I would say about Koke I suppose Llorente is probably the one who might try and join in but other than that you're you know you're not going to have any more than four going at one time and you'll have two sitting in front of that back four stringently um, surely Simeone know, Simeone must know that the onus will be on him to go and play there I mean he's going to have to bring something to Old Trafford well, you know, when, when you're going in and, and this away goals room isn't involved anymore, that changes the that changes the, the view people might take as well, you know, because the away goal isn't worth what it was last season. We know that. So now it's a straight shoe out to who scores more goals over the two legs. Mm. Like, I would have to back United to outscore Atletico over two legs. Have to, you know. I just think we have far more creativity going forward than they do. Um, I think defensively, you know, we look at the two goalkeepers, two solid goalkeepers, two good goalkeepers. Um, at the back, like, let's not forget, the boy Stefan Savage was at Man City, didn't cut the mustard at all. 
he's he's okay. He's not amazing. He's not amazing. And um, they'll miss the boy uh, Luis Felipe. Yeah. That he'll be a big miss. Um, you know, Versalco is good. He's solid. He's Croatian international. You know, he is good. And um, I think you can get Atletico. I really do. But I think the only way to get at them is quick, fast paced, sharp. And I think that's where United may come unhinged at times because as a United fan, I would say our, our football, although you know, a little more attacking re- in, in recent weeks, mm. it's still very slow to build up. You know, yeah. uh, like there's a lot of us trying to pick the ball up high. And, and, and make two or three touches and score a goal. That's great. I'm delighted with that. Mm. But I mean, it's been a long time, and we'll, we'll only go back to the weekend. It's been a long time since I've seen United score a goal like the, the Bruno Fernandes goal. The back to front in five or six seconds, three or four touches, one, yeah. two passes, ball stood up, goal. Mm. That was an unbelievable goal. And that's the type of goal that I would say City, Liverpool, score. Maybe not the headed version of it, but maybe a side foot, maybe a tap in, maybe something like that. Yeah. And they're the types of goals that they can turn a game on its head really, really quickly because it took them five, six seconds to score the goal, you know? Yeah. A lot of United's games, what happens is we're building. So you're giving, constant... teams, you're giving teams the opportunity to reorganise and get structured. So yeah. many times I look at the teams yeah. they're playing against, they have two flat banks of four and then everyone looks around at each other and goes, what do we do now? Yeah. Mm. You know? I, and, I suppose... and we almost, have to, we almost have to invite them onto us. Yeah. I suppose the key thing for United as well is Ronaldo. This is a stage for Ronaldo, isn't it? Especially it's against definitely... Atletico. Well, it's the Champions League. We know it's his favourite competition. We know he's he's always a little bit better in the Champions League than he is in every other competition for some reason, you know? Well, not for, for some reason, because mm. this is where he puts the his onus, you know? Yeah, and especially against Atletico, obviously. I mean, Absolutely. Be, yeah. So, United you know the team, De Gea, Dallo, Varane, Maguire, Shaw, McTominay. I'm not sure about McTominay if he's going to recover from that ankle. That ankle looked fairly dodgy now. We could say nah, he'd, be right. he'd be okay, you think? McTominay, Pogba, Alanga, Fernandez, Sancho and Ronaldo. Um, Seems solid enough. I think you're right in so far as I think that I think you have that bit more quality. Um, if you look at the betting, it's 11 to 8 Madrid, 21 to 10 to draw and 21 to 10 United. So it's um, it, it's marginal really, you know. They, they haven't been very, very good at home this season. Their, no. their home record has been extremely poor this season and they've struggled uh, at, the, uh, at the at the home venue. So this is, this is set up for us, if I'm honest. We've, we've played a lot of our best football away from home in the last 18 months even. So this really sits, sits well for us, if I'm honest. If we can come back to Old Trafford, you know, level our heads, even a goal, I'd be happy enough. Yeah, what's your prediction? Um, I'm gonna go draw on it. I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go one one. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. One one. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be fine going back to Old Trafford with one one, and um, you know, 15th of March, obviously. Um, you know, it's a, it's one of those eight o'clock kickoffs. Atmosphere in the in the ground will be unbelievable. It'll be electric. You know, really will. We'll have 79. Tells and pack that place out mm. and should create an unbelievable atmosphere to go and to go and finish the job, you know. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe uh, pick them off 2 1 at home and 2 1. I'm sure, on I'm like sure they give uh Luis Suarez a nice welcome, all right. <laughs> no doubt about that. Um, I'll have my fangs at the ready, <laughs> absolutely. You'll be, chomping. Be You'll be chomping at the bit for this game, won't you? Be yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, no, I'm thinking one all as well, and I think I think United will probably go through in the uh, the, the home leg. I think, um, I think you're right. I think there is that bit too much more quality for United. But again, it's with United show up as we've seen this season. You know what I mean? If they go about their business, it is the Champions League. They're fully aware it's the last chance to loan for a trophy. Um, not that we're expecting them to go on and win the tournament, but if you're in it, you're in the shake up. No, you know? but don't forget. We've we felt like that a number of times with mm. teams. I mean, nobody thought Chelsea were gonna lift that trophy last season after you know changing the manager and stuff like that. It happened the same when they brought Roberto Di Matteo in, you know, and mm. made it made a change in the managerial status, just got rolling in the competition. 
just a competition that you know was maybe a little less intense than the Premier League, and was one that they could they could plot their way through. Yeah. And on a, on a final, anything can happen. We know that. We've seen it before. Absolutely. Well, it's a brilliant night of football. Um, yeah. coming up, and this this is a real tantalising toy, especially because they haven't met each other too much. But obviously. Ronaldo in the mix there as well, especially against Atletico. And I'm sure the reception he'll get at that stadium will be similar to, let's say, one Luis Suarez going back to Old Trafford. No and, and I actually heard earlier on, um, and I've and I completely forgotten about it, to be honest with you, the atmosphere that one David De Gea would have expected compared to the one he's going to get. Because don't forget, he was only a faulty fax machine away from signing for Real as well. That's right, yeah. That's right, yeah. So it's going to be interesting. All right. So, you know, he'll expect to go there, back there. He's a, He was born in Madrid. He's a hometown boy. He'll go back there and expect a reasonable reception, but the boys might not see it that way after the, the incident with the transfer. Yeah, not if the fax was going to the white side of Madrid. You know, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, we will wait and see, but I'm sure it's going to be a brilliant game. Absolutely festival of football coming up this week. As always, if you want to contact the show, the Upper Tier Podcast at gmail.com. We're on Twitter at the underscore upper underscore tier. Facebook and Instagram, the upper tier, and you'll get audio versions of the show out there. Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Amazon Music. A pleasure, my friend. Now, there Wednesday night, we'll be doing the match reaction. Hopefully, the game is still tight. I know you're enjoying your You're looking forward to going to that home leg with the boy. Oh, yeah. Um, so you have to have a card in the game, don't you? Really going to that, really? Uh, we'll, we'll be in it. And I mean, even like it would take something spectacular for us not to be in it, you know? Mm. Like, even if we lost 2 0, we're still in it. You're still in it, yeah. We're still in it. Mm. Um, and, and, and I don't know whether, you know, I'm certainly not hoping to lose 2 0, no. but I don't know whether sometimes you need that little jolt. Mm. You know, you need that little, we have to go out from the word go and bury this. Yeah. You know, because you don't want to go into games tentative like this. I want to see this. I want us to bring a Premier League tempo to this Champions League game and make it high intensity, you know, like the game on Sunday was. If we can turn this into a game similar to what we did on Sunday, we'll beat this. Yeah, I think so. I think you should have enough for them anyway, yeah. Absolutely. Until next time, we'll be talking Wednesday night with a match reaction and player ratings, and it should make for interesting viewing, to say the least. As always, our viewers out there, all you Man United fans, Drop your predictions down into the comments. Let us know what you think, what your team selection is, and what your score prediction is. And we will talk to you again real soon. Cheers, bud. Thanks, brother.